I'm going to read to you a, a little clip, a little verse from this wonderful book. I didn't mention that I don't think in the reference uh, material, but this is a book that should really, I think, be in everybody's library. I think every Elizabeth Zimmerman book should be in people's knitting libraries. It's not necessarily talking about spinning, but I maintain that, especially the part that I'm going to share with you today, you could just insert the word spinning for when Elizabeth mentions knitting, and it would suit at least my perspective and my attitude towards it. Now, you might look at this book and say, well, there's no pattern in here that really fits modern times that I would want to make. That's beside the point, um, and I, I would disagree with that sentiment, but even if you feel that way, just the knowledge and the encouragement and the enthusiasm about knitting is worth having this humble, simple little book. So add this to your library if you don't have it already. But I'm going to read a little bit from it today, and I hope that it conveys the attitude that I try to convey when I talk about spinning for sock yarn and knitting your socks. So that will be my technique tip for today, listening to Elizabeth. Elizabeth writes, Consider the agreeable material and tools to use, and she admits to a rooted preference for wool. Wool, soft wool from the simple silly sheep can be as fine as a cobweb, tough and strong as string, or light and soft as down. There are scientific reasons why wool is the best material for knitting or spinning, and into these I will not go. I only know that it is warm, beautiful, and durable. Woolen socks never become cold and clammy, however wet. A woolen sweater is so water resistant that when dropped overboard, it floats long enough to give you ample time to rescue it. For people allergic to wool, one's heart can only bleed. Synthetics are a marvelous substitute, but a substitute is all they are. The allergic must be grateful that they didn't live in the dark ages of 50 years ago when one kept warm in winter with wool or froze to death in linen and cotton. Elizabeth goes on to write that it's true that a synthetic sweater, or in our case socks, can be washed and dried in machines, but to me this rather reduces it to the level of a sweatshirt. Washing a real sweater is akin to bathing a baby and brings the same satisfaction of producing a clean, pretty, sweet-smelling creature. Very rewarding. So I think that could be true for our socks as well. So you might remember the picture that I showed, I, I think I showed in the last little vlog of the little sample skeins that I had spun when I was over in the roundhouse spinning this past weekend. And it was just a little picture, maybe I can insert it here, um, of the, it, it was just singles. I hadn't plied them back on themselves yet. And here are those samples now plied up. So I thought I would show those to you and, and see what you can take from that. So they are, this white is the Coradell and Alpaca. This marled gray is the Harlequin wool from my friend Carrie. The darker charcoal gray is Finn and Alpaca. This silvery gray, and this these two little skeins were half the amount of these, but so just wee small samples. But this silvery skein is uh, from my friend Stephanie's ram condor, a Shetland ram. And this is from even another blend, again from my friend Carrie, and this was a Finn 
and long wool cross, a luster long wool and thin sheep cross. Very interesting spin. Um, but I think that you can see, I, I think I have mentioned that I really hadn't spun much over the winter. I did a lot of knitting, but I didn't do a lot of spinning. And I'm rusty. I'm really rusty. And I think it shows in my spinning and in my plying. I think you can, especially it seemed like I did really poorly with my own Coradale and the alpaca. Look at how, and I thought I was spinning, spinning a fairly tight single. And look at that. So um, that's, that's probably not going to work. I'm probably not going to use that in the socks. The Harlequin is pretty good. This is 100% wool, and it's quite bouncy. It really reminds me a lot. I believe Harlequin is a result of Jacob and Southdown sheep. Now, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's CVM in there somewhere. I need to get my facts straight on that. But it really reminds me of spinning Jacob. Uh, the, the Finn and Alpaca. I did a little bit better on that. But you can also see it's quite a bit plumper. This had a higher percentage of alpaca in it. This, the Shetland from Stephanie's Ram um, spun very easily, but it wanted to spin really fine. And so you see that. And then this was just really an interesting one to spin. It's really soft and bouncy. And I think I, think I mentioned when I was spinning uh, before, or maybe I didn't. I don't think I showed you when I was spinning this. But I think this could be a nice pair of socks. So I might have to get some more of that from, from Carrie, from my friend. So anyway, I, I guess I'm not giving you any tips here except to say that it is good to practice and to sample when you can. And I, I knew I was not spinning very consistently. So I was making quite an effort to do so when I was spinning over at the roundhouse at the cabin. But now looking at the resulting skeins, I can see that I wasn't. So that's kind of a lesson to myself. And I've been doing this for a good number of years. And so maybe this is an encouragement to those of you who are beginning spinners and who don't feel like you're having much luck in spinning your yarn. That it even happens when you've been doing this for a long time. So I'm going to go back to the drawing board. I'm still going to use the same fibers, but I may change um, my ratio on, on my Louette. I have three different ratios, you know, for faster, slower, um, more take up, less take up. I may change my treadling speed. I might slow it down. I might speed it up. And I might adjust my drafting zone just a little bit. I think if I remember, I had a little bit of a, a sore shoulder that day too. And you know, anytime there's anything like that, it seems like it shows up in the spinning. Likewise in the tension of the knitting. Do you find that too? I sure do. So anyway, that's what I have so far. And I also think maybe I should throw a little black in here with this. Um, some of the black, I have black Shetland. I don't think mine is the fine wool Shetland and it's quite a short staple length. So I don't think I would want it on the foot, but I could do it on the, on the leg maybe, or as a little bit of a contrast color somewhere. But I think I need to throw a little something in. Maybe, maybe, we'll see. But so I guess stay tuned and see if I improve on my spinning. Now I do have the luxury of having plenty of fiber to play with. If you only have just a small amount, if you, if you only purchased or if you only have the six ounces um, or the eight ounces, you may not have that luxury. So uh, you, you might have to just go forward with what you have. And I could use these, they would work, but I can do better. So I'm going to work on doing that. How about you? I, I've, a lot of you are really taking off on this and, and really, you know, some of you have sat one sock complete uh, or nearly complete. And I think that's wonderful. And so, you know, you may find that you want to turn right around and do a second a pair of socks or a second spin just from what you might have already learned. But there's also those of us, those of you who maybe are just starting out or are changing your mind about your fiber and that's okay too. So anyway, that's that. One of the questions I'm asked quite often is if I have any tips for spinning fine enough to replicate a commercial sock yarn. 
And no, I don't. Um, I think I've talked about that before. I have been spinning for years and I've never been able to accomplish that. But I'll be honest and tell you that I honestly haven't tried very hard because I don't care for socks that are knit with something that fine. Um, my, my friend Lisa made a comment the other day. Uh, she called it the ever elusive three ply sock yarn where you think that you're spinning just a fine thread and then you ply the three plies together and you're at a sport weight or whatever. And so, no, I, I'm sorry, but I don't have any tips to help you do that. I guess my only tip would be practice, practice, practice until you get, uh, you know, your singles fine enough to be spun into a three ply that could match a commercial sock yarn. Um, but it, uh, that goes hand in hand with the idea that, that um, when we're working with hand spun, and especially when we're spinning wool, that sometimes you have to throw the norms or the rules or the requirements out the window because let's say you're spinning for wraps per inch or yards per pound and you look at what the industry standards are for those things. Well, it might not match up. You might have spun something that works up as a sport weight, but if you, or even a fingering weight, but if you were to do a wraps per inch, or if you were to do yards per pound, you would come out with something way higher. Well, wool, you know, different wool is thicker or puffier or floofier, how tightly you ply something, how loosely you ply something. Even if you use, say, a wraps per inch tool, I have one, I think I have two. Um, that's very, what's the word that I want? It, it it depends. Now, I might do my wraps per inch, and I might wrap very tightly and have my little wraps very closely together. You might take the same yarn and wrap it loosely and farther apart, and so we're not going to come up with the same wraps per inch, right? Um, something like, like in our sock set blend, the, the fin and alpaca is a very dense and heavy fiber, and so... It weighs heavier than the same amount of yardage in the same number of plies as, say, the harlequin wool. So that's all fairly relative. Um, so think about that when you're when you're spinning. If you don't want to try to spin, or if you aren't able to spin fine enough to, to match a commercial yarn, then at least maybe try to spin with a tighter twist uh, it, for a sturdier yarn. But still, remember, you want something that's going to be comfortable and squishy in your sock on your foot. I should say I'm wearing today my Moonology hat, which was a pattern by my friend Ellie. And I want to be sure and mention that because I'm thinking about Ellie, who is facing some difficult times in her life. And so if you watch this, Ellie, thinking of you. Anyway, I wanted to remember to say that. But anyway, that is my answer to uh, a frequently asked question today. And so um, my answer is I don't have an answer, I guess, and I hope that's okay with you. So uh, then next, we're going to announce the prize winner from last week. I don't have a prize to give away for this week, but I have one in the works for next week. And speaking of different fibers... I'm also going to talk to you about uh, something that I think is kind of exciting. So stay tuned to the end if you're interested. And thank you for everyone who is following along and commenting. I'm really excited that this year, like I said, a lot of you are just going with it. You're spinning and you're going to knit with what you have. So think about that too. Talk to you soon. Let's give away a prize. Well, I thought you'd like to know who won the prize from last month's or last week's giveaway, which actually was just a few days ago over the weekend. And that was for the lovely luxury lotion and the lip balm that's made my, by my friend Carrie, who is also the farmer who produced the Harlequin robing that's in our um with us in our sock blend. And I'm going to talk more about that in just a minute, but I wanted to do the giveaway first. So the winner of this prize is a friend of this podcast, um, a follower for a very long time, and always an encouragement and a supporter, and that is Bonnie at Meadows Sweet Farms. And Bonnie has a YouTube channel of her own, 
you could go and check it out. And she's just a gentle, creative, lovely soul. I hope one day that we will get to meet in person and do some crafting together. So go check out Bonnie's podcast if you haven't already. And Bonnie, congratulations and thank you for the comment. Thank you everyone who commented that you'd be interested in this lotion. And I'll have Carrie's, my friend who is the farmer who raises the goats, I'll have her contact information um, down below. But I do know that she has not got a lot of stock right now because she's waiting for some baby goats to be born <laughs> any, time, any day. And so when I go to her farm to interview her, we're kind of hoping that uh, some baby kids, some baby goats will be born. So I will get a hold of you, Bonnie, and get your address and get that sent out to you. And um, for the next giveaway, I don't have anything. <laughs> so this week there isn't a giveaway next week we will have one again so stay tuned now I am going to talk about some fiber and um, a lot of you have asked if I offer any roving for sale and I haven't for a very long time and I didn't start this sock spin along to try to sell you guys something but you have asked and I did have some fiber at hand, and I had the opportunity to have it made into roving. So it's Coradella and Alpaca Blend. So I'm going to talk about that for a little bit, and I'm also going to talk about uh, the curated sock spin, sock set, sock blend that we did, my free, three friends and I did, with Michigan fibers in it. Um, and that is fiber that I have talked about quite a bit here. Finn and Alpaca. Harlequin Wool, and Coradella and Alpaca, along with the Bunny Toast Blend. So if you're not interested in seeing what might be available for purchase, go ahead and uh, sign off now and come back next time. Um, but if you would like to see, or if you're interested, go ahead and, and watch for a few more minutes. And I'll talk to you real soon. And finally, to show you that I do occasionally have things available. So many of you have asked, and I finally had some roving made with some of my, my wool that I've kept back. I didn't start the sock spin along trying to sell you something. I think you know that, but there's been a lot of requests, and so I needed some for myself. And then I thought, I will put some out there, make it available to you. So I have for sale or available in very limited quantity, Coradella and Alpaca roving. I have these three colors. This is kind of a warm cinnamon brown with a brown alpaca and just the tiniest bit of copper sparkle. This is uh, this was kind of a, a pale taupe colored you and then some blonde or fawn alpaca. So it's kind of a honey butter, honey blonde color. And then the white. Coradell and alpaca. And these are just little half ounce bumps just to show you. And then I also have the bunny toes. And so what I'm going to do is um, for the month of February of 2024, these will be available for purchase, a minimum of six ounces. And for any purchase of six ounces or more, you're going to get from me a free bunny toes, which is a $10 value. So it might be a fun time to try it. Like I said, a minimum of six, um, but you you know you can buy more if you want. But there is only going to be one bunny toast per package. So let me know if you might be interested. It is a very limited quantity. Um, the cinnamon brown uh, is almost gone. I've already already sold some of that, so that one is nearly gone. Let me know. I don't have this on a website as of right now. If it goes well then I will consider putting a website back up. But for right now, if you would just contact me on uh, Instagram, if you follow me there, I'm My Wool Mitten Farm, and you can direct message me, or you can email me at mywoolmitten at gmail.com and just put fiber in the subject line. And then we can discuss getting some of that to you. So let me know if you might be interested in spinning it for socks or just spinning it uh, just because. I'm really excited about it, and I really appreciate that you guys have encouraged me to do this. So take a look and let me know. Uh, and of course, your six ounces or whatever you'd be interested in 
can be all of one color or it can be two ounces of each if I have that available. The bunny toes, uh, I can't guarantee the color. It probably, probably will be one of these three with Angora Bunny added. All right, so if there's any other questions about it, uh, just let me know. It is all from my farm. The alpaca is from a neighboring farm and the, and the Angora Bunny is from a neighboring farm, but the wool is all from my sheep. So I'm kind of excited. Let me know what you think. Now, the other thing we have available, if you'd like a little variety, is our curated sock spin set. This is the same thing that I offered in the prize, and this is all Michigan fiber, all within 45 minutes of me. And what this will include is six and a half ounces, um, probably the minimum amount you'd want for, for spinning for socks, but it will include Coradale and Alpaca from me, this is Harlequin wool from my friend Carrie, and that's 100% wool. And then the charcoal gray is Finn and Alpaca, and that's from my friend Emma. And then with that will come a half ounce bump of the bunny toes, which is from me, and that includes Angora from here in Michigan. It doesn't include the basket or the lace or the spun skeins, but these are spun from these same blends. So if you would be interested in that as well, now those are $40 and they include, $40 includes the bunny toes. You don't get the bunny toes for free. These were very carefully curated by us. We got together, we talked about what we'd li like to offer to represent our farm and this is what farms and this is what we came up with. So again, limited amounts, but if you're interested, uh, the same contact information, contact me, Carrie, at mywoolmitten at gmail.com or on Instagram as mywoolmittenfarm. You can direct message me and then we can talk about what's available. These are limited runs again and once they're gone, they're gone. But if you're interested, let me know. And again with these, if, if this is something that ends up being a popular item, then we will probably put it out there on a website. So uh, think about it. If you have any questions, be sure and let me know. And thank you for your interest. Happy spinning.